This is the first video in the Biology Key Skills series of tutorial videos. In this series, we will be looking over the five key skills that you need to know for your Biology GCSE. The first video is on cells. In this video, we will be comparing the structures of animal, plant and bacteria cells. We will look at the functions of the key organelles that we find in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And finally, we will look at some examples and adaptations of specialised cells. Our big question today is to compare the structure of animal, plant and bacteria cells. So what are cells? Well, all living things are made up of cells. These can be either eukaryotic or prokaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are much smaller and simpler. For example, bacteria. Eukaryotic cells, such as animal and plant cells, are much more complex and include far more organelles. Prokaryotes, such as bacteria, are single-celled organisms, whereas eukaryotes tend to be multicellular organisms, such as us or plants. For your GCSE, you need to be able to compare three generalised cells. These are plant, animal and bacterial cells. So first we have animal cells. Within our animal cell, we have organelles. These are subcellular structures that are much smaller than the cell and are the component parts that make it up. In the middle of the cell we have the nucleus. The nucleus contains all of the genetic information that controls the activities of the cell. The genetic material is arranged into chromosomes. On the outside of the cell we have the cell membrane. This holds the cell together and controls what comes in and what goes out of the cell. We also have, represented here by the white, the cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance where the chemical reactions of the cell take place. This contains enzymes and they control these chemical reactions that the cell is carrying out. We also have two further organelles. The little blue circles are the mitochondria. This is where the reaction for respiration takes place. This is where we transfer the energy that the cell needs to work. These have their own genetic information known as mitochondrial DNA. Finally, the little yellow dots, these are the ribosomes. These are involved in the translation of the genetic material when we are carrying out protein synthesis. Plant cells are quite similar to animal cells, however they have a few extra organelles that you need to know. Just as we had with animal cells, we have a nucleus, we have a cell membrane, we have cytoplasm, we have mitochondria and we have ribosomes. However, we have three more that we need to know. First, we have the cell wall, which goes around the outside of the cell membrane. This is very rigid and is made of cellulose. It supports the cell and helps to strengthen it. We also, in the middle of the cell, have a vacuole. This contains the sap and the sugar of the cell. So it's a weak solution of sugar and salts. It helps to maintain the internal pressure to support the cell. It also provides the cell with a source of food. Finally, the green circles are the chloroplasts. This is where photosynthesis happens, which makes food for the plant. They contain a green substance called chlorophyll, which is why they appear green and why green plants appear green. The final type of generalised cell you need to know are bacterial cells. These are much, much smaller. However, they do have some similarities to both plant and animal cells, but they do have a lot of their own organelles. Bacterial cells look quite different to animal and plant cells, but they do have some of the same features. For example, they have a cell membrane, they have a cell wall, they have cytoplasm and they have ribosomes. However, they do have three features that are exclusive to them. 
First of all, they have chromosomal DNA. This is not contained inside a nucleus, but rather floats freely in the cytoplasm. It is one long circular chromosome. And just like the nucleus, it controls the activity of the cell. We also have plasmids. These are small loops of extra DNA. They're not part of the chromosome, but they can contain genes for things like drug resistance and can be passed between different bacteria. Plasmids are used heavily in genetic engineering. Finally, we have the flagellum, or if there is more than one, the flagella. This is a long hair-like structure that allows the bacteria to move. This means it can move towards food or away from toxins that would be harmful to it. This is very important for a single-celled organism as it has to move towards the food by itself, unlike our cells in a multicellular organism which work together to move us. It is important to be able to compare these three types of cells. Here we have a Venn diagram with animal cells, plant cells and bacterial cells. I want you to complete this diagram in order to show which organelles are present in which types of cells. We will start by filling in the unique organelles of each type of cell. Animal cells do not have any organelles that are unique to them. Plants, on the other hand, have both chloroplasts and a vacuole. Our bacterial cells have flagellum, a plasmid and the chromosomal DNA. Our next step is to fill in the organelles shared by two types of cells. There are no organelles exclusively shared between animal and bacterial cells. However, animal and plant cells share mitochondria and a nucleus. And plant and bacterial cells share a cell wall. Finally, we have the organelles shared by all three types of cells. These are cytoplasm, a cell membrane and ribosomes. This is an easy way of comparing these three types of cells. So far, we've only looked at generalised or typical cells. However, most cells are actually specialised. This means that they're designed to carry out a specific function. Specialised cells are very, very common inside multicellular organisms, where we have lots of different cells to do different jobs. For example, you would have brain cells, you would have nerve cells, we have got red blood cells. Cells have a structure that makes them well adapted to the function that they're going to do. For your GCSE, you need to know about three specific types of specialised cells. These are egg cells, sperm cells and ciliated epithelial cells. Both egg and sperm cells are highly specialised in order to carry out sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, the nucleus of the egg cell will fuse with the sperm cell in order to create a fertilised egg, which will become a zygote and then develop into an embryo before eventually becoming a newborn baby. The nucleuses of the egg and the sperm cell both contain half the number of chromosomes that the rest of our body cells do. Our normal body cells are diploid and contain 46 chromosomes, whereas both egg and sperm cells are haploid. This means they only contain half the number of chromosomes, so they contain 23 chromosomes. This is important because it means when they fuse, we end up back at a diploid cell with 46 chromosomes. Both egg and sperm cells have a few adaptations of their own as well. Egg cells are much bigger than sperm cells. This is because they contain the nutrients in the cytoplasm in order to feed the developing embryo. It has a haploid nucleus and has a specially adapted cell membrane. Straight after fertilization, the membrane changes its structure to prevent any more sperm from getting in. This ensures that it only gets fertilized once. Sperm cells, on the other hand, are much, much smaller. Sperm cells, once again, have a haploid nucleus. They also have an acrosome. This is at the head of the cell. 
This contains enzymes that allow it to digest its way through the membrane of the egg cell. Just behind the head of the cell, in the middle section, we have a large amount of mitochondria. This provides the cell with lots of energy in order to allow it to swim towards the egg. And finally, the sperm cell has a long tail. This allows it to swim towards the egg. The third and final specialised cell we're going to look at now is the ciliated epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are cells that line the surfaces of all of your organs. A large number of epithelial cells have cilia on their top surface. These are hair-like structures that line this top surface. These are adapted to move substances. The cilia beat to move substances in one direction along the surface of these cells. For example, in your windpipe, you have lots of these ciliated epithelial cells. In your windpipe, these help to move the mucus up out of the windpipe. This mucus has collected both bacteria and dust from the air and it moves it up to the throat so that you can swallow it. This prevents this mucus and dust and bacteria from reaching your lungs. So what have we looked at in this tutorial video? Well, we have compared the structure of animal, plant and bacteria cells. We've looked at the function of the key organelles found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And we have looked at some examples and adaptations of three different specialized cells. So our big question today was to compare the structure of animal, plant and bacteria cells. I want you to have a go at this question now. So for our answer, all three cell types have cytoplasm, a cell membrane and ribosomes. Both plant and bacteria cells have a cell wall. Animal and plant cells have mitochondria and a nucleus. Plant cells have chloroplasts and a vacuole. And bacteria cells have a plasmid, chromosomal DNA and a flagellum. This concludes this first video tutorial in the Biology Key Skills series. In the next video, Biology Key Skills video 2, we will be looking at microscopes, including microscope calculations.